Welcome everyone, I'm Techzilla and I'm back again with another Huawei Mate 20 Pro video. Today I'm going to do a quick walkthrough or in-depth walkthrough to, through all these settings and menus, give you a few tips, a few tricks, um, especially if you're looking to buy this device you'll find it helpful. Now I've got the screen brightness up quite a lot on this device so you might see colour shifting while I'm filming as I go from a dark screen to a bright white screen reason I've got the screen brightness up on this phone is because of the flickering that keeps happening. You, I can't see it on the screen here, but it's the way the camera's picking it up. So bear with me guys. So first things first, SIM card, memory card, or two SIMs, whatever, put it in, that's obvious. Setup process is a piece of cake. So when you get to this stage, your home screen, pinch in, go to home screen settings, home layout, I put it at a five by six, five by six, okay? So I get more icons on my home screen. So let me just, let me just try and turn that up a bit. Yeah, let the camera adjust a little bit helps. You can lock the home screen layout, auto align, shake to align home screen icons. So if I do that, come out of this. So say if I move that there, okay? It's a shape to align icons. See how it shook? It's changed all of them and moved them up there. So let's go back in here. Switch that off, because I'm not gonna use it often. Uh, app icon badges, display dots or numbers on app icons where there are new messages and notifications. So, new notifications, I'll put unread so I can see how many unread emails I have and how many unread messages I have. It probably works with more apps, but I've only, this is fresh out the box. Uh, app suggestions, I would switch that off because it'll just irritate you. Uh, home screen loop, I leave that off, otherwise you go round in a circle in your um, home screen. And Google feed, I like to have that switched on. So that's that. Transitions, so you can pick a different style of transition. I'll leave on default for this, for the sake of this video. And wallpaper, which is self-explanatory. Then you pull this down, okay? Click on that little pencil icon or pen icon, and you can arrange these how you want, move other things into here, take some stuff out. So for example, let me try and put in do not disturb because that is something I use a lot. Let me move hotspot out of here because I don't use that. Ultra power saving mode, navigation dock, Dolby Atmos, I'll leave all those on. So when you're happy with that, you can reset it from there. Just go back and now it should have NFC is there, do not disturb is there. Let me put on do not disturb for the sake of this video. Back open. Now go into here. So first of all, wireless and networks. Go into your Wi-Fi, go into here, settings, and where it says Wi-Fi Plus, automatically switch between Wi-Fi and mobile data to stay online. I have that switched on, because sometimes when my Wi-Fi goes out, I want it to automatically go on to my mobile data or whatever, depending on how stable my Wi-Fi connection is and vice versa. So come out of there, add network. We don't need to go into that too much. So that was in settings, because I know someone's gonna ask me again, how, did I, how do I get to it? So come out of there, that's first thing. Now I'm not gonna go into mobile network or into the SIM settings because you'll see my personal phone numbers. But in mobile network, you have got a Wi-Fi calling option there that you can switch on if you wanna use it. And in dual SIM settings, obviously you can pick which one gives you your data, which one you get your calls on, etc. Device connectivity. Let me switch off NFC because I don't need that right now. Huawei Share. Let's go into this. Now this is from the presentation, looks quite a good feature. So you can share or print without using mobile data. 
So if I switch this on, share files to nearby Huawei devices easily without using mobile data. So if I go to get started, enable Huawei share. So I'm not gonna get into it now because you know, it will take too long. And there was a computers on the same network can access your files. So if I click enable, if I click on that, so currently visible to computers on the same network, that is something I'm looking forward to. I'm hoping that works with my iMac Pro. I'm pretty sure it will, but I will try it out. Switch them off for the time being. Come out of that. Home screen or wallpaper. You don't need me to explain that, but what I like here is you've got your magazine unlock, themes and wallpapers, home screen settings you've already seen. Now home screen style, let me go into here. That's like an iPhone, that's like your Android phone with an app drawer. So I'm gonna go for that. And it automatically does that. So now I've got a app draw icon there. Now, Anything else left in there? Show step count? No, I don't. Actually, yeah, let's leave that on. Let's leave on. Always on display. Let me switch that on. Start time seven in the morning till 11 at night. That sounds pretty good to me. So you've got always on display. Now let's go down to display. Goes hand in hand. This is turned up for obvious reasons. Um, color and eye comfort. I've got it on natural tone at the moment because it's easier for my camera to film it. Color mode and temperature, so you can adjust that on there. I'm not gonna go into that in too much detail. Eye comfort, so if I hit that, switch it on, it changes color. See that? I'm gonna look whiter there. I'll come out of that. Come out of that. So I would schedule my eye comfort, etc. Put your sleep to about 30 seconds to a minute because you don't wanna waste battery. Probably 15 seconds is good if you can do it. Text and display size, screen resolution. Now here, I've got it on smart resolution. Reason being is it'll automatically adjust depending on my battery power and what I'm doing between 720p, 1080p and 2K resolution. Because there's no point having 2K resolution when you're looking at like this, for example. It doesn't make any sense to do that. More display settings. So full screen display. These are the apps you can have set up to have them as full screen. The notch. Now, not everyone likes the notch, so we can hide it on this. Google. Let me pull that back there so you can see it now. All the color shifted now. Thank you very much. The Google Pixel could learn a thing about this. See how they've moved all the icons up into that space, but that looks pretty good. Pretty good, that's very convincing. I genuinely can hardly see that notch there. I'll leave it on for the sake of this video. And a display carrier name. Now, I won't bother because it saves you space up there. What do you need to know who your carrier is? You know already who your carrier is. Auto rotate screen is simple, simple. So we'll come out of this. These all, the things like text and display size, you already know, it's not a big deal. Sounds, I'll just show you that real quick. There's nothing for me to tell you here. This is self-explanatory piece of cake. So you can have screen lock sound switched on, screenshot sound, screen touch, Vibrate to touch. Yeah, it, it's simple. That you can mess around with and work out for yourself. Now, notifications. Um, now this, hold on, let me go to app gallery. So you can pick which apps individually you want to allow notifications for, which ones you want displayed in your status bar, on the lock screen, which one you want banners where they come down and then go back up. Uh, priority display. So basically uh, in do not disturb mode, the notifications from this app, if you switch that on, will not be silenced. 
and etc. So that's something definitely I would go and look into, especially if you get a lot of, lot of notifications like me. Go back in there. Uh, lock screen notifications, I've got it to show. More notification settings. So pulse notification light, notifications turn on screen, and notification methods icons. So come out of that. Battery. Now this is a big one for me. So power saving mode, ultra power saving mode, app launch, battery usage. They're all straightforward things. If I hit this, bang, you wanna switch that on because it will save you on battery power because this is an OLED display. And by switching that on, it blackens all the white interface. So that's gonna save you a lot of battery power, especially if you use your phone a lot. And this is your wireless reverse charging, which I'm not gonna show you right now, but when you switch that on, I can put another Qi enabled device on the back of this and charge that from the Mate 20 Pro. That is a boss feature right there. Boss feature. I'm gonna test a few different things what it will and won't charge. Uh, storage, straightforward. Security and privacy. Uh, Google Play Protect. So Google Play Protect regularly checks your apps and device for harmful behavior. Uh, so you can basically, Google will regularly check your device and prevent from or warn about potential harm. So I have that switched on if you wanna remain safe. Uh, location, access is on, straightforward. Fingerprint ID, so let me just take this off. Back again. So finger, uh, finger, I've already set up one fingerprint. So new in-screen fingerprint. I could show you that, but it's a piece of cake. You just keep doing that and it sets it up. And you can have it, your fingerprints so they can access your safe or access your app lock. <coughs> Face unlock I've already got set up works really well on this device, really well. Password Vault. So in that, again, you just basically put in your passwords, it locks it down. It, you can fill out your passwords on different apps and so on for you from there. Private Space. So basically, this is when you set up two different fingerprints for essentially two different phones. Same phone, but if I use this thumb, it'll come to my normal everyday layout, messages and so on. And then I can set it up. So if I press this thumb, it takes it to a completely different workspace. So it looks like I'm using a completely different phone with different settings, different messages or whatever. So all of those of, of you out there doing a bit of um, hanky-panky behind closed scenes, you might want to look into that. I'm not judging, I'm just saying. Uh, file safe, you know what that is. And more settings. I'm just showing you this because there's literally no point in me telling you about that. Uh, smart assistance, so accessibility, high touch is on. So basically high touch is like a electronic shopping service as it were. Uh, One-handed UI, so mini screen is on. So you can swipe up from the corner to shrink it down to one-handed size screen. Uh, keyboard, shifting keyboard is off, but you can switch it on so you can shift your keyboard from left to right. And motion control, so flip to mute, pick up, so if I pick up the device, it will reduce my ringtone volume for calls, reduce my tone volume for timers and alarms and wake my device. Uh, raise to air will answer calls, make calls, smart speaker and smart Bluetooth headset. Take a screenshot. So if I do a knock twice on the screen to take a screenshot. 
or draw an enclosed area to capture part of the screen. Knock twice with two knuckles to make a screen recording. Knock with one knuckle and draw an S to take a scrolling screenshot. So you got all that? Have that switched on, it's useful, especially if you use that sort of thing a lot. Uh, open apps. So draw a letter to open an app. So you can have like a C for camera to, if you want to use that as a knuckle gesture. Uh, split screen, you know what that is. Voice control. So you allow high voice to access your contacts. Okay. Okay, let's switch to I don't normally use high voice, to be honest. But voice, wake up, quick calling, you can... You can set up a command basically where you say it with your voice and it will wake up the device from its sleep. I mean, just take a look at that. You can see roughly what that is without me going on about it. So answer calls with voice control. So you can say answer call or reject call. I might actually try that out. That's quite interesting. I will try that out when I'm doing my review. Uh, Miss touch prevention prevents accidental operations from being carried out on your phone when it's in your pocket or bag. Definitely switch that on. Gloves mode, if you're wearing gloves, switch that on because it makes the screen more sensitive to your finger touch. Users and accounts, I'm not going to go into Google services we all know about. These two are self-explanatory. System navigation, so you can have three key navigation like I've got here. Or you can have gestures, which is new to a lot of these Huawei devices. You can see there, to go back, you swipe from the edge. To go home, you swipe up from the chin. If you swipe up and hold, it will take you to your recent apps. And if you go from the either corner and slide up, it launches Google Assistant. Swipe up from the bottom corners to access high voice. No, but I don't want high voice. Thank you. I'll just have the Google home. So that's quite nice. Or you can have the navigation dock, but I'm going to stick with gestures because I'm testing them out. Uh, phone clone. Uh, we don't. Basically, you can use phone clone to copy and transfer data from your old device into your new one. I don't do that. I prefer to set the phone up from fresh. That way, there's not going to be any hiccups in here at all. And that's it, guys. That was my tips, tricks, and in-depth walkthrough of all the settings and so on. Um, quickly, let me just show you the camera. So switch camera modes, GPS tag, enable it, and now. This I'll do a separate video for completely because I think it deserves it it's, and I'll put some shots and videos in but I just wanted to show you the camera app real quick before I cut out on you guys so there we have it guys what do you think let me know in the comments below oh there we go there we go Got a bit of cramp in my right hand for some reason, but who cares? Anyway, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I don't care. Share it on all your social media because it helps me out, helps me grow the channel. And you never know, it might help other people out that who have got this device or are gonna get it. And that's it. If you haven't seen my other Mate 20 Pro videos, check them out. There'll be little thumbnails here. Click on those, watch them. I've got a lot more videos coming up about this device camera tests, comparisons to other flagships. I've got all the flagships in the world here. So you definitely, definitely want to stay tuned for that. Anyway, until next time, this is Techzilla saying take care and peace.